there. Mail's here. Got a couple of letters from the North Pole for some special friends. Up oh, there they go. Looks like you two finally made it off that naughty list this year. And I got one more. Up oh, there she is. It's from your mother-in-law. She's coming on the 20th and staying for a month. <laughs> you know what? That news deserves a sample packet of Excedrin. There you go, darling. <laughs> Good evening. Obviously, I'm not really... Uh, a mailman, and uh, I would not give her real Excedrin. That's just a packet of Smarties. I have a whole bag of them if you want them later. Um, I'm just uh, getting into character because I play the mailman, uh, Willie, in our show. A good actor gets into character, and we're about to start the show in about two minutes. Um, actually, we were supposed to start the show two minutes ago. <laughs> um, hmm. uh, Kathy, yeah. Kathy, uh, yeah, can Gerald? you call places for the actors so they can know to come out? Yeah, that's actually been done. We've been waiting on you. Huh. Well, in that case, <coughs> welcome, hello, hope you're ready for starting the show. We're gonna go someplace sometime soon, you will know. We're gonna take it from the top, giving it all that we've got. So turn up the lights, turn up the lights, and light up the night. You're gonna see some dancing in the streets. You're gonna see some lovers feeling sweet. Could be some dancing Christmas trees making their big debuts. Could be some feeling neighborly. Well, maybe not these two. We're gonna show you a good time all around. Little story that starts inside this town. We're gonna go and do it right. And we're gonna show a beautiful sight. To so turn up the lights, brilliant and bright, and light up the night. Now, our story takes place just a few miles from here in the fan district of Richmond, Virginia, in the historic neighborhood that borders Meadow Park to be exact. Now, we've taken some poetic license and added a gazebo because, well, because we can. Uh, the year is 1967. Men were racing to the moon. The minimum wage was about $1.60 an hour, and Motown was on the move. Hey! <laughs> it was the era of Beatlemania. <laughs> Bouffant hairstyles, crew cuts, go go boots. Nailed jackets. <laughs> and the Watusi. guys. Oh, who do you call when the lights go out? Who do you call? Who else? B-E-B-C-O. Vecco. All right, moving right along, I'd like you to meet my friend Walter Freeman. I guess you could classify him as modern-minded and slightly liberal. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Always good to see you. His beautiful wife, Lillian. And their children, Mark, Patty, Laura, and Stacy. Now, on the other side of the stage, and on the opposite side of almost every issue from Walter, is Archie Wright, conservative to the core. Say hello, Archie. Hello, Archie! <laughs> oh, I kill myself. He does it every time, every time he does it. Okay, uh, here's his wife, Betty, and their children, Dennis, Judy, Debbie, and Eddie. You'll be seeing much more people, some uh, people who come to town, some tourists, they're checking out the lights because it's Christmas time after all. And Christmas with these families is colder than a wintry freeze. Every Christmas you spend with these, it's also another movie race.
can see that you are going to be a fantastic audience. Uh, and I can also see that James and John, that is Walter and Archie, are one step ahead of the rest of us. So actors, please, places for your entrance into Act One. You'll be needing this. Oh, thank you very much. What is a mailman without his hat? Please. All right, 1967, 1967, 67. No mail for you today there, Walter. Well, I can take getting no bills any day. <laughs> I hear you. I got that package you've been waiting for, Archie. Well, I'll just drop it on the front porch there, Willie. I'll get it when I'm down up here. Yes, mm. sir. Yes, sir. Oh, boy. <laughs> hey, Mark, bring a box of those blue light bulbs out here, will you? He's in the shower, Walter. <laughs> hey, Patty, can you bring me some I'm of them? on the phone. Stacy, how about... I'll do it when Gilligan's Island goes off, Dad. <laughs> Looks like you're having a little trouble with your hope over there, big guy. Yeah, but I think I'm making pretty good progress. Oh, as you see, we're going a beach theme this year. <laughs> oh, yeah, but very interesting, but we're, we're a little more traditional over here, you know. We like... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see you still going with that same old manger, manger thing you use every year. <laughs> hey, and Walter, there is a reason they call it Christmas? Ah, uh -huh. there you go, preaching at me like you always do and inflicting your opinions on me. Well, you might want to start listening every once in a while. Oh, that's rich. Like when I listened to you and we lost the football championship? <laughs> we lost the football championship? I don't think so. You called the wrong play. I didn't call the wrong play. You ran the wrong play. I called power sweep right, and you ran to the left. And you've been running to the left ever since. <laughs> As a matter of fact, if you get any more open-minded, your brains are going to fall out. Ah, oh, I know what's going on here, buddy. I know what's going on here. You're jealous. Jealous. <laughs> yeah, on. ever since you found out I was accepted into Yale. <laughs> bulla, bulla! <laughs> Yale? Why would I want to go to a foreign state to go to college when I could go to a fine Virginia institution like Hampton, Sydney? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the institution where they actually go real grass on the football <laughs> field so that the homecoming queen can get a chance to graze. Now, you leave my wife out of this. Oh, speaking of grass, your grass is looking pretty bad oh, this year, buddy. Hey. It's always a competition with you, isn't it? And you know what? Your son is following right in your footsteps, bragging all over town how he's playing second chair trumpet in the band. You don't hear my son bragging? And he's playing first chair. It's probably because he's dating the band leader's daughter. That's it, buddy. You want a competition? You got it. By the time I'm done with this house, it's going to light up this town. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Betty. I want to see you and the kids down here now. Pronto. Lillian, I want to convene a family meeting now. Bring the lights and bring the bells. Bring extension cords. All that Sears and Roebuck sells. Anything from Wars. And kids, bring those candy canes on down. Bring the string of lights. People going to come around.
but you're trespassing again. With all the seasons, warmth and fun, there's so much here for everyone. We've got the stuff to see it through. We've got the best, we've got better to do. Like flamingos. I never would have thought of that. <laughs> That's good stuff right there, I'm telling you. Good grief, Walter. How many amps is all this stuff pulling anyway? You know we haven't finished our upgrade here in Meadow Park yet. So far, my crew and I have only made it as far as the church. But it's going to be amazing, man. These lights are going to pop, pop, pop. It's going to be all over the place. Oh, it's 6 o'clock, Betty. Got to school. George's parents are coming for dinner. Oh, and Effie and I have a pot roast in the oven. Well, my sister means is I have the pot roast in the oven and she's hungry. Oh, Effie, do you smell something burning? If you let oh. me burn that pot roast one more I'm time. Oh, my goodness gracious sakes oh. alive. I cannot believe this. For heaven's sake, Alice, don't dog. Why the rush, Agatha? You'd think we had an audience with the Queen of England. Roxy Monroe is a busy lady, Velma. And besides, as chairwoman of the esteemed Fan Revitalization Committee, I must ensure its punctuality. Alice, Alice, have you received the load-in schedule from Light World? Roxy needs it to finalize the rehearsal schedule. I have it right here, the load-in schedule, and the invoice, which I think you should take a good look at, Harold. There's not enough money in the pledge contribution budget to cover this. And these came in yesterday, invoices from Costume World, Sound Technologies, Premier Dancewear, Avon, oh, 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 sorry, oh, that's mine. <laughs> And an $800 bill from the Richmond Times-Dispatch for advertising. Publicity is key to the success of any new endeavor, Alice. And essential for a splendid theatrical production. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, Aunt Aggie. Oh, 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 oh. Essential or not, Miss Roxy, our sponsorship guarantees only $2,000 for... Oh, Harold, worrying will only put ugly little lines on that very handsome face of yours. Alice and Harold aren't the only ones with concerns, Roxy. Tell her, Marvin. Eugene says Tantil is a wire to support all them fancy lights you ordered in. The production electrician disagrees. Production electrician? Engaged for a highly discounted fee. Surely the salvation of our beloved Tantilla Gardens is worth such a meager expense. Just imagine Richmond should she crumble beneath the wrecking ball. No more dancing beneath the stars. Tiny town bowling teams, homeless and disbanded. Marvin and Sons, $400,000 renovation contract. Null and void before ink is ever put to paper. I'll throw in another thousand or two. Afternoon, folks. Well, almost evening. Good evening, Willie. Yeah, I got a special delivery for you here, Miss Monroe. Just sign and date here. Oh, hey, Willie. If you don't mind holding up for just a second, I'll bring out your wife's Avon order. That sounds good. And here you go. This is it. This is what I've been waiting for. From none other than the Roger B. DeMille. I've heard of Cecil B. DeMille. Cecil 
is legendary, of course. <laughs> but, his cousin, uh, but his cousin Roger is a luminary talent in his own right, I assure you. We met in the fall of 39. There I was, barely 18, standing in the wings of Radio City Music Hall with his stomach full of butterflies when a tall, lanky stagehand pressed his handkerchief into my hand and said, Rockettes don't sweat. You're going to be marvelous, darling. And I was. <laughs> well, we were inseparable from that day forward, Roger and I, and destined for greatness. Roger, a born producer with an incredible eye for talent, and me tapping and high kicking my way up the ladder of stardom. We could almost see our name in the lights. What, what happened? happened? Broken ankle maliciously plotted by a skinny blonde understudy derailed my career. And then the war came, violently ripping Roger from my life. Well, we wrote passionately and daily at first, of course, but soon the letters stopped coming. Was he captured? Was he killed? I never knew until last Saturday night when I sat down to watch the Channel 6 News and saw myself gazing into eyes I could never forget. My Roger, the newly hired station manager. Well, I sent a parcel care of the station, daring to hope for a reply, and here it is. <laughs> My Foxy, Woxy, Roxy. <laughs> That's me. I was surprised to hear from you after all these years. The rehearsal footage was delightful, and I am convinced that your starry Christmas nights will be an intriguing addition to my Christmas celebration series. I personally will oversee the filming of a half-hour segment to be broadcast on Christmas Eve. My assistant will be in touch with details. On a personal note, I have enclosed something I hope will bring a smile to your beautiful face. Still your number one fan, Roger B. DeMille. <laughs> Well, this is it, my chance for a comeback. And our chance to save Tantilla. Sounds like a win-win. You're with me then? Come, talk and walk. Oh, are you coming, Velma? No, I'm just gonna take the bus home. Okay. Oh, thank you for waiting, Willie. Now make sure you give Sally my regards. I surely will do that, ma'am. Um, forgive me if I'm buttoning in, Miss Velma, but you don't seem too excited about Miss Roxy's news. It's exciting, I guess. Channel 6 filming Miss Roxy's big production. But you'd prefer a more traditional celebration. Yes. Like last year, the Saturday before Christmas, my daughter Marcy and I dressed the grandchildren in their Sunday best and headed downtown to Miller and Rose. To see to... the real Santa and <laughs> dine in the tea room. Of course. And then picked up their dad and came to Meadow Park as a family for the nativity and the carol scene. Yeah, that's become a tradition for folks in this neighborhood. But this year, with no nativity and no carol sing, it just won't be the same. No, no, it won't be the same. But sometimes the man upstairs has a plan that we can't see. Yeah. And I think I see your bus coming. Plus, I got a delivery to make over at Stella's. So I will bid you adieu. Good night, Willie, and thanks for the ear. Anytime. <coughs> hey, Buzz, give me one Diana Ross, no mayo, burn it, run it through the garden, pin a rose mm -hmm. on it. Two Marvin Gaye's high and dry, one with the boss in a bowl, one on the city MD, hold the hail, and one to turn, turn on, on wheels. wheels. Ladies, I love it when you talk to me in stereo. And how was everything tonight, Effie? Well, I beat the tar out of burnt pot roast. <laughs> Plus, it gave me a chance to show off my new red go-go boots. <laughs> well, don't make yourself so scarce. Well, speaking of scarce, where's that daughter Clarissa of yours been keeping herself lately? She's been over at Twinkie Toes most nights, rehearsing her little heart out. You know, Roxy's got her doing the showcase number for Starry Christmas Nights. Yes, you might have mentioned that. 
several times. <laughs> Evening, ladies. <laughs> Willie Wilson, I had about given up on you. I had a special delivery for Miss Monroe. She got some big news. You've been peeping in her maid. No. She read it out loud while I was standing there. And I know she won't mind me passing it along because it's something you'll be particularly interested in. Well, take a load off and tell me all about it. Some big-time New York producer friend of Miss Monroe's is working at Channel 6. She's convinced him to put her starry Christmas nights on TV. Stop pulling her leg, Willie. This starry Christmas night's mess has made her difficult to live with enough as it is. No, really. He's bringing in a crew to film on the 22nd. My Clarissa on TV! Oh, my. Hey, sorry I'm late. Here she is. My star. My twinkle. Twinkle girl. <laughs> I used to be beautiful, just like you. Then Father Time got his hands on me. But that's okay, <laughs> because this is the break that I, I, I mean, that you have been waiting for. <laughs> We're going to get you that red sequin dress. The one we saw in that expensive catalog. Oh, she looks stunning in red. <laughs> And maybe some glitter for my, for, I mean, for your hair. And I'm going to have to have something to wear. And I don't mean from J.C. Penney's either. I'm going to Montaldo's. I wonder how fast I can lose some weight. Never mind. I'll just get me a new girdle. Not Mom. like they're going to be looking at me or anything. Mom, what are you talking about? You haven't talked to Miss Roxa, have you? No, she got help. Willie just delivered a letter from a New York producer friend of hers. Starry Christmas nights. It's going to be on TV. You're kidding. It's all about the payoff. All that money I spent to uh, give you ballet lessons Mom. and voice lessons. Mom. Look, I know it's always been your dream, my dream, to be a star, but I need to be honest with you. Clarissa, this is no time to be honest. All my life, I have been, I mean, I've been waiting for you <laughs> to be discovered. Look around you, Clarissa. Diana Ross, Judy Garland, Lena Horne. You can be one of them. You can be on the Ed Sullivan Show. It's like all your life's been leading to this moment You might as well become a star Cause that's what you are You've got the stuff to make it to the big time you got the stuff, you got the stuff Diana Ross, you better look out You better look out, look out But we've got a star that's gonna go shine Go now, go now we gotta watch it go far and be a star. We can be a star. I kind of doubt it. Like any one of them. Oh no. We got the talent, the back it, put it, make it, like it. I can guarantee you can be a star. I sincerely doubt it. Any day. Oh, you can be a star. Why, you could be the next. Or the next year round, or the next year.
Get all upset. You know your mom only wants what's best for you. She would do anything for you. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah, 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 yeah. Think of the life you could have, Clarissa. Designer clothes, diamonds, furs, limo rides, a mansion in Beverly Hills. Millions of adoring fans. All you gotta do is get up there and sing your song and flash that dazzling smile. You got a smile so bright. You know you could have been a candle. And when you're on TV, they're never gonna change a chance. ring is this close. It's out there waiting for you. All you gotta do is just reach out there and grab it. Of course she's gonna grab it because oh, she's me. my girl mm -hmm. and she wouldn't want to break her mm -hmm. mama's heart. Hey Eugene, your super needs your crew down at Meadow Park pronto. There's a problem with the new circuit at the church. Come on fellas, looks like our electrifying presence is needed elsewhere. Seriously Clarissa? You know they're talking about closing down the tiny town and Tantilla. And if putting on Miss Roxy's show will get folks on board with the renovation project, then that'll be good for all of us, right? Yeah. Especially your mom. Come on. Okay, I'll do it for you, Mom. <laughs> That's my girl! Now you go all home and take yourself a nice, long, hot bubble bath and get yourself some rest. Cause we have to have you look in your glamorous Hollywood bound best. Actually, I'm heading in your direction, Miss Carissa. I'll keep you company if that's thank okay. You, oh, thanks, Willie. That'd be great. Ma, I'll see you at home. Loretta! I need you to clear your appointment book for the 22nd. Clarissa and I both will be coming in for the works. Put us down for a shampoo, cut style, facial, manicure, and a pedicure. What do you mean, what's the occasion? Girl, I know you have heard the news by now. <laughs> My baby is gonna be on TV! Oh, who do you call? 
when the lights go out. Who do you call? Who else? V E P C O. There go. When things are the darkest, we shine the brightest. A one, one two, two, three. three. A zip, zap. Plug it in, turn the power on. We'll get your light from dusk till dawn. Zip, zap. So dependable, so you can always call. There go. Good evening, Pastor. Hey, we got a call that there's a problem down at the church. Yeah, Joe was running the vacuum and he said the power just uh, shut off. Funny though, uh, doesn't it seem to have affected anyone else around here? That's because the church is on the new circuit. That's a good thing. Except when everyone else is on, the church is off. And we're here to fix that. So if you'll just lead the way. Okay, follow me, guys. Mm hmm. I know Mama thinks she knows what's best for me, Willie, but I don't want to be a star. Well, maybe you should just be honest with her. I suppose. Hey, Willie, do you believe we each have a destiny? Well, I believe we each have a destination and a purpose to live out along the way. Now, you know the destination. Heaven, of course. It's the purpose part that's given me the biggest problem. Well, how so? Well... I have a lot of fun things I want to do with my life. Some of them are a little outside of the box, but I just don't know how it fits into the big picture of my life. You mean God's picture? Yeah. Well, fun and purpose can coexist, you know. So since you have a plan for the fun part, maybe a talk with Pastor Wiles would shed some light on the rest. Maybe. Hey, Willie, thanks for the ear. Please tell Sally and Jesse hello for me, will you? Will do. <laughs> I just hope Mama doesn't have a heart attack when I break the news. Looking at love that has lasted so long Feeling this tug in my heart can't be wrong You call me away far from the place I should be
my brother has a used Harley for sale. Cheap. Give him a call. <laughs> oh, Pastor Wiles. Oh, evening, Clarissa. May I have a moment of your time? Well, I think we're headed the same direction. Let's walk and talk. Great. I'd like to talk with you about the missions project in Arizona. Oh, great autism program there and a great ministry. You know, I can't believe there's only eight days until Christmas. I know. I can't believe it, too. You know, I haven't got any shopping for your mother. Oh, you're kidding me. Hey, isn't that a new palm tree over there at the Freemans? <laughs> You'd think there was a competition to see which house is the tackiest. Oh, yeah, you're not kidding. And that Sam and over at Archie's is new, too. You know, I, I think you're right, but getting back to my mother, she's been dropping all kinds of hints about her Christmas present. I'm sure she has. <laughs> then why don't you buy anything? She's very picky. I'm here. I thought Mom and Dad would never go to bed. I brought you a piece of my birthday cake. Thanks. Was the party fun? Not so much without you there. I saw Miss Anderson and Bambi going in. Come on, Stacy. Her mom and my mom are best friends. Okay, so Bambi's pretty. But can she pop a wheelie? No. And when her dads took us fishing last summer, I had to bait her hook because the worms are too slimy. <laughs> Who wants a girlfriend like that? Who wants a girlfriend that can't even come to their birthday party? It's not always going to be this way. Our dads are never going to change. Maybe not, but before you know it, I'll be grown, you know, 16 and can drive a car. Then we can run away together. How would we do that, with no money and no place to live? I'll always take care of you, Stacy. After all, a good paper boy can get a job anywhere. <laughs> Shh, what was that? Quick, hide. That's your grandpa. I wonder what he's up to. Who's there? I'm warning you, I've been trained in judo. Uh, it's all right, Hazel. It's just me, Elmer. Elmer? Oh, stay right there. I'm coming out. <laughs> oh, my. What on earth are you doing out here at this hour? You're in your pajamas. Don't you know you could be arrested for that? I saw you hanging some garland earlier today. I thought maybe you could use some beignet. Oh, <laughs> that's very thoughtful of you, Elmer. But if Archie catches you over here, oh my lands, the trouble that would cause. He's already threatening to put me in a home. Oh, they all asleep by now. Can't we just sit and talk for just a minute? Oh, all right, just, <laughs> just for a minute. minute. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <sighs> well, you sure look pretty tonight. <laughs> Even in your curlers. Oh, you caught me off guard. Uh, no, I, I didn't bring you a card, but <laughs> I got you some flowers. You did? I left them right back at the house. I'll go get them. Oh, no, just forget the flowers, Elmer. It's just so nice to have someone to talk to. <laughs> All I ever hear is, take your Metamucil, mother, and take your Metamucil, nanny. Take your Metamucil, Hazel. Uh, it just gets so old. Yes, I, I could imagine. Well, what did you do today? <laughs> well, uh, I got up this morning. <laughs> I ate a bowl of bran and took my Geritol mm -hmm. and I just eased back and waited for those to kick in. <laughs> They're thinking a lot about us. What about us? Hazel, I think we should get married. Oh, Elmer, you know they will never let us get married. Well, hold on now, Hazel. I thought about that, and I've come up with a plan. A plan? We'll tell them we have to get married. <gasps> what? <laughs> we'll tell them that you only have six months to live, and marrying me would be your last dying wish. Now, now, why can't you be the one who only has six months to live? Well, okay then. Uh, what have I got? Um, maybe you didn't take your Metamucil. <laughs> well, can you die from that? Oh, I'm sure you can eventually. 
Okay, so what say we meet down at City Hall next Friday while everybody's oh. getting ready for that big show? You know, Betty does send me to my room every day after lunch for a nap. I bet I could sneak away then. Well, good, then. That's our plan. Oh. Why don't we <laughs> seal our plan with a little Christmas kiss? Oh, you do know how to make a girl blush. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like your grandpa's sweet on my nanny. Yeah, our dads won't be too happy about that either. No, but when you're older, it doesn't matter so much because you can do what you want to anyway. If only we were older, we'd hop in the car, drive to the ocean and watch shooting stars. We're grown up, so tell us it's time to come in. Or to ask where we're at Or make fun when we chat If only we were too old for that <laughs> If only we were younger With plenty of time Spend our days carelessly, like nickels and dimes. If only the winter would give way to spring with that warm breeze it brings and the birds as they sing, then you and I would take wing. With only the moments, the time allows, we're all only given. The here and the now So hold me close Don't let me go There's only this moment we Did everything pass muster this time, Mr. Cooper? Well, Miss Monroe, it appears that you've crossed all your T's and dotted all of your I's. So I'm going <laughs> to issue you your permit. However, I need to tell you one more time, the light circuitry at Tantilla was not designed to handle all of those lights. Good night, Mr. Cooper. Good night to you, Miss Monroe. Well, Roxy girl, let's hope you're on your game tomorrow. You are going to be marvelous, darling. Roger! <laughs> I remember you, uh, taller. <laughs> and I remember you, thinner. <laughs> oh, listen to us. And, and look, look at, at us. us. Really? I mean, how long has it been, anyway? 24 years, 73 days, and 8 hours approximately. I'm surprised you kept track. I'll 
I'll bet my surprise trumps your surprise, Mr. DeMille. Quite frankly, I was shocked to see you alive and well after you'd fallen off the face of the earth. In letter after letter, I poured out my heart. Why didn't you answer? You were the one who didn't answer. I mean, I was out of my mind with worry until Celestine wrote of your new love life. Celestine wrote to you? Celestine, the skinny red-headed understudy. Faithfully. <laughs> now it all makes sense. Her concern for your well-being, her questions about your whereabouts all under the guise of friendship. <laughs> I see where this is going. It's intrigue orchestrated by an unrequited love. <laughs> oh, she was clever, all right. Every morning, I put a, a letter into my apartment mail slot for pickup. And every evening, I came home to find the slot empty. I'll lay odds Celestine intercepted each and every communique. I loathe understudies. I guess we're both victims. This time. All the painful abandonment, the wasted dreams. Well, maybe they weren't wasted. Oh, look at us. We're a few rungs further down the ladder than we thought we would be. <laughs> okay. But you're still a knockout, babe. And with moves like you got, you don't lose something like that. You still got what it takes. Ooh. <laughs> and you still have an eye for talent. <laughs> You could ask any fool if you take a priceless jewel and you put it in a setting that's cheap. Would it be priceless still? Well, of course, you know it will. So with you, you're at the bottom of the heap. You take a beautiful rose, so delightful to the nose, manure it would smell just as sweet. So with you, mon chéri, still exudes celebrity, no matter where you live. Cause you have got what makes the taters cook Oh, Roger Oh, Roxy, you got it I can always spot it No matter how deep I have to look You're right, I've got it The others overshot it For you have fit the nail on the head Some people think I forgot it But hey, I really got it And, and you I just need a break together Head Well, that's it Tomorrow night will be my big break a few more stretches, darling. Oh, easy there, my little starlet. Roger, do you really think you could transform me into a star? Like a lovely butterfly, all its beauty might be lie. How it started out as no more than a worm. So with you in this cocoon, we'll be re-emerging soon. Watch your this and that are just a bit more firm. You see you're a tiny grain of sand in a cool and slimy clam. But just a bit of time till you're a pearl. You're like potatoes in the mud. You got sprouts but gum and spuds. You got all the fame and fortune. That's my girl. Yes, you do. I've got it, I've got it, and you can always spot it. No matter how deep I have to look. You're so right, I've got it, the others overshot it. For you have fit the nail on the head. Some people think I forgot it, but see, I really got it. And, and I just need a break to get ahead. Yes, I you just need a break. To get ahead. Oh, well, tomorrow's a big night. I better get my beauty rest. <laughs> if you get any more beautiful doll, you're gonna outshine the stars. That's my plan. and not running. Oh, I'm sorry, Joanne. I wouldn't have to run if that Clarissa of mine didn't move like molasses in January. Oh, 
It was like pulling teeth to get that girl out of the house this evening. Stella, I would just chalk that up to pre-show jitters and nervousness because after all, after tonight's show, baby girl's life is going to change in a mighty big way. <laughs> we gotta find our seats. Excuse me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here in Tantilla Ballroom where the figurative curtain is about to go up on the city's first annual Broadway-style extravaganza. Starry Christmas Nights has been directed by former Radio City Music Hall performer Miss Roxy Monroe, who owns and operates the Twinkle Toe School of Dance in the Fan District. Our producer this evening is none other than Channel 6's own station manager, Mr. Roger B. DeMille. And our sponsors this evening, the Fan Revitalization Committee. The proceeds from tonight will go towards the estimated $400,000 needed to restore this beautiful ballroom. And tiny town, 10 Pin Alley, right downstairs, yes. Yes, the home of the best lemon chiffon pie yes. that will ever cross your lips <laughs> you. and your hips. Uh, thank you for that reminder, Miss Valentine. Stella Valentine. Yes, thank you. Stella means star. You know? Uh, yes, thank you, Miss Stella Valentine. And if you'll just take your seat there, then we'll get back to the rest of our show. We have two acts warming up the stage for Miss Roxy this evening, beginning with the Richmond Metro Glee Club, made up of singers selected from schools throughout the Richmond area and directed by local entertainer by night, mailman by day, Mr. Willie Wilson. Singing an arrangement of pop songs by Alan Brown. Take it away, kids.
is finishing up a three-month tour across America here at Tantilla this evening. While the brothers are getting into place, director Luigi Sarducci will be joining me to tell me a little bit about what the brothers will be singing for us this evening. Oh. You ain't never seen nothing like this before. These are brothers from Italia. They're going to perform for you tonight their favorite song of the faith, the Hallelujah Chorus. Wonderful. Well, maybe yes, and <laughs> maybe no. You see, there's just one little teeny problema. Go on. Well, you see, Miss Cronkalite, uh, these are brothers. They've taken a vow of silence. Well, Directory, if they cannot speak, then how? Oh, just watch and be amazed. Maestro, por favor, con gusto, Garloco! <laughs>
you, Directory, for that uniquely inspiring performance. In fact, while the crew is setting up our stage, let's hear one more round of applause for both of our warm-up acts this evening. And now, now, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Roxy's Follies. Oh, finally, it's Christmas Eve, and I'll load Santa's sleigh tonight. He'll whistle and then sail into the sky. Some toys are ready to be wrapped, and others waiting to be packed. And each one made with a special child in mind. With children wondering out loud what all these gifts might be, I bet they'd love to ask him now, Hey Santa, what'd you bring for me?
stay where they are and remain calm. Will somebody <laughs> help me up, please? I knew this was going to happen. Shouldn't the emergency generator have kicked in? Working on that now. I have a flashlight here somewhere. Clarissa, baby, don't you move a muscle. You don't need to break a leg or anything. Here it is. Bingo. I'm fired. I'm out of here. Oh, man, dude. What happened? Oh, dancers. You, you, you better collect your things. And, uh, crew, I guess you better strike our beautiful set. Uh, dispatcher called, and the lights are out south of here all the way to the school. Does that include Meadow Park? Because yeah. I have to bake 12 dozen cupcakes by tomorrow morning. Yes, all the houses in Meadow Park are out too, man. Man, how about the church, Eugene? Well, the church and all the street lights around the park are still on because they're on the new grid, which is still up and running for now. Well, friends, I know many of you don't have power at your homes, but the church does. So here's a suggestion. Our children are going to do their pageant in Meadow Park tonight, right after Miss Roxy's show. So walk on by and, and, and behind the church and, and to Meadow Park and uh, maybe we get started a few minutes earlier than we had planned. We could be ready to go in 15 minutes. Excellent. Ooh, Ooh yes, Pastor. Sir. Yes. Hey, do you mind if we film the children's play? I mean, I have about 15 minutes of unedited footage to fill a 30 minute time slot. I have no objection at all. Oh, great. Okay, crew, we need to pack this equipment up and get it up to the church pronto. Roger, do you really think your audience would be interested in a church play? You know, sometimes you just have to make lemonade out of lemons, doll. I know it's a long shot, but at least it's a shot. Come along, children. Stay in line. Does everyone have their headbands? I have extras. Oh, thank you. Okay, children, we've got to be ready to start in just a couple minutes. So everyone move to your starting positions. And star kids, remember to move on as dawn broke. I think we're about ready to roll. Hey, Leo, can we get a sound check on Katie here? Testing, yeah, one, yeah, yeah, two, yeah. three, uh, test. Matilda, come on over here. If you could get the shiny spots. Ready when you are, Mr. DeMille. Okay, and let's roll in five, four, three, two, and one. Ladies and gentlemen, given the technical difficulties that interrupted Roxy's Follies, we've made the move up to Meadow Park to take a peek at the Christmas play that the Sunday school children had been preparing, The Littlest Star. And it looks like they're just about ready. So children, it's all yours. Twinkling softly, deep in the night, raise the creator's radiant light. Sprinkling starlight, brilliant and bright. when the stars were joyfully dancing in praise of their creator. Twinkling softly. We here on earth call it twinkling. Twinkling softly. Ooh. God sent a message on the night wind, summoning all of the stars in the heavens to appear before him. And so, as dawn broke across the sky, all of the stars gathered in God's throne room, curious as to what the news could be. A long blast from the herald angels' trumpets <laughs> sent a holy hush as God appeared in all of his splendor and majesty. 
Now, the stars knew that God loved the people on earth, even though their disobedience had caused him great sadness. And they knew that one day, God planned to send his own son down to live with them and show them how to live. Imagine their excitement as God revealed that his plan would get underway this very night. My beautiful shining stars, the time has come for my son to go to earth. One of you will play a very important role in the events that will soon come to pass. God wanted to explain that there are certain people that he wanted to visit Jesus when he was born. In particular, some wise men traveling from the east. God had decided to use the light of a single star to lead them to the stable in Bethlehem. What a perfect plan, the stars thought. But which star was worthy of such an honor? It was then that some of the stars began to boast to God why they should be chosen for the task. Sailors and travelers use my light to find their way when they are lost. By virtue of my experience, I, Polarius, am the logical choice. You gotta have the experience on your side. You want somebody who's been around. They're gonna need an experience, aren't you guys? A star who knows just what's going down. We can have someone who has just started shining. We can have someone who has been to their post. We need a star with lots of years they can draw from. Cause it's experience that matters most. Yeah, it's experience that matters most. I beg to differ, Lord, with a visual apparent magnitude of 9.47. I am the brightest star for virtue of my brilliance. I am the best choice. You gotta shine if you want to be chosen out. You gotta prove you're the brightest star. They gotta see you from thousands of miles away. They gotta see you for who you are. So shine it brighter now than anyone else can. You'll be the brightest of the To the sun who lights the earth by day Out of respect for my sister star Lord, you should choose me You gotta have the connections to get you in You gotta hang with the inside crowd You gotta have lots of people that you are friends Cause who you know is what it's about You gotta hang out with the popular faces You gotta do the things that keep them all close You need connections and do all the right Another, sing its own praises in hopes of being chosen by God. were fixed in anticipation upon the throne, God's eyes fell upon a small shimmer of a star that watched in silence, unnoticed by all except its creator. And what of you, Twinkle? Why have you had nothing to say? Lord, you know I'm as so small, my light to barely shines at all, surely someone's better light would do. Wherever you want me to. 
My precious little star, by humility and purity of praise, you have proved yourself the worthiest of all stars. Henceforth, you will be called the Star of Bethlehem. For the season of my son's nativity, this star, who has sought no honor for herself, will shine brighter than any star has before or ever will again. And when her time of glory is ended and she returns to her place in the heavens, her memory will shine throughout the ages, forever leading the hearts of who seek him to the stable in Bethlehem. And so the now, not so little star rose high into the sky, sending star beams of worship down on shepherds and wise men, leading them to baby Jesus. Please join us as we sing, O oh, Little Town of Bethlehem. Well, folks, we started this evening filming a Christmas spectacular at Tantilla Ballroom. Circumstances beyond our control intervened, but perhaps not by coincidence, because what we heard and saw here tonight through the eyes of these children may be exactly what we needed to see. This is Katie Cronkite wishing you a Merry Christmas from Meadow Park in Richmond, Virginia. And that is a wrap. <laughs> Children, what a wonderful job you did. I am so proud of you. Pastor, can you take it from here? Can do. There's a reception in the fellowship wing around back. Everyone's welcome to join us. Hey, I think we'll take you up on that, Pastor. Great to see you all. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> Mr. DeMille, my name is Stella Valentine. I am the mother of Clarissa Valentine. Honey, you and I need to talk. We're going on in, Dad, you coming? No, you, you guys go ahead in. I'll, I'll be in in a minute. Hey kids, have either of you seen your nanny? Not since lunch. <clears throat> Dad, our friends are going to the reception. Can we go? Well, you all can go on, and if you want to, I'm going to just take a walk. Well, we won't be long. Okay. Have you seen your grandpa? Not since lunch. Hmm. Hey, thanks. He found my glasses. You did a great job out there, little lady. How does it feel to be the star of the show? You missed the whole point, mister. The star of our show is the baby Jesus. The star job was just to lead the way so folks could find him, you know? Did you find them, sweetie? This nice man found them. Oh, this nice man is Mr. Wright. That's some young lady you've got there, Willie. I know you're awfully proud. Eh, she's a keeper. Uh, so Betty and the kids inside, you gonna join us? No, but you have a minute? Sure, sure I have a minute. Jesse, run on inside and tell your mama be just a few minutes. Okay, Merry Christmas, sir. Merry, Merry Christmas. What's going on, Archie? Never seen you look so troubled. Watching the children tonight and talking with your daughter has made me feel things I haven't felt in a very long time. What's that? Wonder. A sense of amazement that, that God's son would come down to earth as a helpless infant. That the king of the universe would leave heaven to be born in a barn and, and sleep in a feeding trough. That angels would sing to shepherds and kings would follow a star just, you know, I always wondered what it must have been like to have, to have been there. Like, imagine you're a shepherd, and you stand on a hillside, and you're just watching the sheep. 
like you've done day after day, night after night for probably years. And you're dozing on and off when all of a sudden, there's angels everywhere and they're singing to you, proclaiming that the Savior of the world has been born and they are sending you to seek him out. And how are you going to know you found the right kid? You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. <laughs> now that must have been confusing. <laughs> Are you sure you know where you're going? No, but look, the star stopped just ahead over that stable. A stable? Do you remember what the angel said? You'll find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Right, and chances are a manger's gonna be in, in a stable. Okay, let's go see. Messiah, the King of all kings, the one to dispel the dark, the light of the world has come to the earth, showing his love to humble.
The manger scene is so astounding. How did I lose sight of that? I've put the same manger scene up in my front yard for the last 15 years. I haven't missed a Christmas Eve service since Betty and I have been married. And every year, every year, I, I get more and more immersed in the celebration and less amazed by the story. You know, there's nothing wrong with enjoying the festivities that are a part of Christmas. The problem comes when we forget the reason he was born. Yeah, to point the way to God. Yeah. The Christmas story still has the power to reach across time and point the way to God. Only nowadays, he uses believers like you and me, like he used the Bethlehem star to point the way to Jesus. By how we live our lives, but mostly by how we love others. Even those who aren't so easy to love. Yeah, I've done a pretty poor job of that too, I'm afraid. I mean, I'm awfully quick to throw a few bucks in the offering plate to help people on the other side of the world, but what have I done to help the man and reach the man who's literally in my front yard? Except throw out a bunch of Christianese and a lot of judgment. Not what matters most. How can I find my way to Him? I feel so distant now. Where do I begin? I know what you mean, but He's closer than it seems. Some light is all you you could say a prayer. God, send a star to light my way to, to where you are. Walk the path you want me to. Though the way is dark and God can seem so distant. He'll guide your hearts in love. He'll send a star. I said I want to find the truth, and that can lead me back to the God of life. So he. From the start, I will open up my heart, soften what was hard, just guide my way. Guide, send the star to light my way to you, whether near or far. Follow any light that you send me. Just lead me where you are, God. Send a song. Come and God may guide our path in unexpected ways. 
Yeah. Mom fixed your plate. Oh, I'm on my way. Willie, would you tell Betty I'll, I'll be in in a minute? Walter, you, you should go in and get some dessert. Betty, Betty made cheesecake. No, I think I'll just hang out here. <laughs> Walter, or, <clears throat> you go first. No, 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 you go ahead first. Man, I, I owe you an apology. An apology? Yeah, for, for being a lousy neighbor. For caring more of not being right than doing the right thing. And Walter, I, I called the wrong play. I'm sorry, man. I, I was more worried about winning a, a stupid football game than being your friend. And ever since you've been running to the left, I've just been sliding downhill. Well, I wish I could give you all the credit for all this mess, but I'm afraid I've been so consumed with finding any contradictory point that I may have overlooked the truth, just despite, oh man, just despite the messenger. Man, I know way down in my gut there's something missing. Man, I want what I saw in those children's oh, eyes tonight, man. I want something I can hold on to. I want something to believe in. Even if it's not exactly what I thought it might be. So, um, what do you think? Can we? Yeah. <laughs> what are we fighting about? I don't know how you get your cheesecake to come out like that. Mine always sticks to the pan. Oh, I used to have the same exact problem. Last Christmas, my mom got me the Wilton pan. Archie. Walter. We, we were, were just, just talking. talking. Dad, Mr. Freeman, Stacey and I have something you'd like to talk to you about. Kids, the new Mrs. Freeman and I have something to tell you. Mother! Dad! Archie! I know how you feel about the Freemans, but this feud has gone on long enough, and I don't care I what you agree. say. I What did you say? This feud has gone on long enough. <sighs> yes. <laughs> yes, it has. <laughs> I thought I'd just change the battery in this thing. Oh, gosh. Mom, I have something to tell you. Clarissa, why are you dressed like that? I'm going on the road. I don't want to be a star. I want adventure. Clarissa, are you trying to kill me? No. A woman on the road all alone? Don't worry, Stella. She won't be alone. She'll be riding with me. Yeah. First, we're headed to Arizona to meet up with a missionary team that's doing amazing work with children with autism. And then it's wherever the spirit leads us. Oh, I see where this is going. I see a screenplay in the making. Oh, think about it. Beautiful young lady and grizzled old woman. What? Burst forth from their cocoon of convention in search of their destiny. Or maybe beautiful young lady's mother fearing for the danger of her daughter and elderly friend. Decide to throw caution to the wind to ride alongside, shielding them from danger. Even better, it'll be a classic. But Roger, <coughs> what about me? I have a long-term starring role in mind for you, Mrs. DeMille. Oh, Roger, that's the only role I ever really wanted. Well, it looks like the Christmas spirit was on the move while we were in the back having cheesecake. <laughs> but of course, we actors knew all along how the story would end. But what about your story? Whether you're a Walter searching for the truth, an Archie settled into a routine of lukewarm traditions, or, or someone in between, that star over the stable in Bethlehem still holds the key to the answer for every question, the power to overcome any obstacle, and the peace for every broken heart. That baby in a manger, 
who brought the light of God into a dark and dying world some 2,000 years ago. He wants to live in you and shine through you this Christmas. <laughs> but uh, I think I'll let Pastor Wiles in our gospel course tell you a little bit more about that shining part and maybe get the rest of these lights back on while we're at it. Hey. I know you're all anxious to get home now that the lights are on. So our gospel choir is just going to come on along and encourage you along your way with one last song. Willie, come on, lead us and shine on. Come, right. oh, let your light shine that all may see. Oh, let your light so shine that all may see the newborn King. Come, come to the celebration, prison with all your might. Just open up your life and let him shine. He is light. Come on, shine on through in all that you say and do. What you do, but there's somebody who's got their eye on you. So put aside your striving and your small penny pursuits, and watch that light begin to shine through you. Whoa,
Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, this ends our story um, for 2017. My name is Bob Laughlin. I'm the pastor of Music and Fine Arts Ministry here. And we love telling you our stories. As long as you come, we will keep telling them. We look forward to it every year with our Music and Fine Arts Ministry here. Uh, but this story um, isn't a real one. We created this one. Uh, the piano player you're hearing right now wrote the musical score. He writes for us every year. Ron Clip, Kathy Craddock, who writes a beautiful script every year. We have stories that um, we tell because we want to share our faith in this way through our music and fine arts. We've got some more stories, but they're real stories. On the back of your program, you'll notice there that we have the MyStoryProject.com. It's real stories from people that are on the stage. They're raw, they're resilient, they reflect the light of the world that we've been performing about tonight. Hope you'll go and check that out. My story, the MyStoryProject.com. We end our production every year with something traditional, but let me let you know this before we sing this final song for 2017. Donna Deacons, the original Snow Queen at Miller and Rhodes, is here tonight. So she'll be out in the lobby, and I hope you just stop by and greet her and see her there. What a lovely, lovely lady, and I'm so delighted she was able to be with us this evening. Stop by and say hi. The end of our story really has to do with what it says in Thessalonians in the New Testament. It says that one day the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and those of us who are alive and remain will meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the light of the world. And I hear the sound It's of a mighty rushing wind And it's closer now Than it's ever been I can almost Hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call. Oh, as he sounds the call, and at the midnight cry, we'll be called. I see prophecies being fulfilled everywhere, every day. The signs of the time, they're appearing everywhere. I can almost hear the Oh,
I look around me and I see prophecies being fulfilled every day. The signs of the times, they're appearing everywhere. Oh, I can almost hear the Father. Dead in 